and here we go. Welcome to all you early arrivals. I love it when people get here early. They want to get a good seat, have a good view. So relax. We'll get started in just a minute or two on the May 17th edition of Community Social Hour. It's that time where we connect and reflect and show respect and celebrate our community, become inspired by our community, and then we take that energy back to work with us, oh, in about an hour. So thanks for joining us. But first, we want to know where you're coming from. So say hello in the chat and type in where you are today, because we want to know where you're coming from. I see we got London. Sarah's here. Hello, Sarah. I see we got Krista Summit. She's producing behind the glass, teleporting in from Raleigh, North Carolina. Gabriel's here from Philly. And Raul from the Netherlands. Hello, Raul. We'll be talking to Raul later about his music career. Sydney's here from Southern California. If you believe the headlines, she's one of the last people left in California. We'll be looking at Sydney's literary food magazine as the hour unfolds. Stephanie's in the house, keeping it weird in Austin. And Veer, connecting from Bangalore. Good evening, sir. Here's Joe from New York, New York. So nice, they named it twice. Sarabi from Hyderabad. And Mayuri from Pune. Well, later on, they'll be talking to us about their award-winning application that they built to solve our mental health crisis. Remember, where you're coming from isn't always about a location on the planet. It can also be a location in your mind. And that's where I'm coming from. Many of us balance a career in high tech with various forms of creative expression. And that's one of the things we're going to look at today and celebrate because that's where we're coming from. IBM's new marketing slogan is, let's create. Well, we asked you to share examples, and many did, and we thank you. One of the first to post was Portia Melita from our community partner, Higher Logic. She's a bit north of me in New York's Hudson Valley. She designs murals, and here's one she painted on a wall in Albany, New York. And check out Fabio Emilio Costa from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's a performance analyst with Surpro, but he's also a performance artist for kids. A man of many disguises, and one that I would certainly invite to any party if I got a chance. We love where you're coming from, Mr. Costa. How about IBMer? Emmanuel Tissandier from Paris. He's a software architect working in our Paris lab on process mining and other cool stuff. But he's also a very talented illustrator with a unique style. You gotta love where he's coming from. Let's hop the channel and check out Hugh Everett, who helps run a regional theater in England in addition to coordinating one of our UK user groups. Well, the British take their theater very seriously. And here we can see Mr. Everett hitting the boards in several roles. But that's where he's coming from. Hey, how about Mark Peterson, an IBM client who's also a photographer of no small talent? Look at his eye for color, for composition, for capturing the right moment. Very impressive. We love where you're coming from. And there's many other wonderful contributions posted 
in our community front porch thread. And I'll post the link here in the chat so you can keep adding to it. So take a look at it. And whatever it is you do that's creative, that gives you joy, that allows you to express yourself and share your talents, or just keep yourself sane and balanced, put it in. We'd love to see it. We'd love to share it. We'd love to see what you do. You can put in an audio file. You can put in a photo. You can put in a video. So welcome to this special edition of Community Social Hour. It's Tuesday, May 17th. 2022. We have a fun hour ahead of us. We're going to hear from Marius, our chief community officer. We'll get the inside story on IBM's marketing campaign called Let's Create. We'll spend time with some selected community members and talk to them about their creative lives. And we're going to hear from two winners of the Build About contest. So, to get started, it's my great pleasure introduce to you IBM's Chief Community Officer, Marius Chortia. Marius. Uh, and hello to everybody who's listening today. Um, this is um, exciting. This is the probably the most fun event that uh, we do here um, on a bi monthly basis. Um, I think we're trying to do this now um, because it is not super serious and we learn a lot about, about IBM and what we're doing and um, we learn a lot about the individuals behind uh, IBM and and they're all real people, uh, it turns out. Uh, David kind of gave us a couple of examples of their talents and um, it, it's great to drive inspiration from that. Um, so. Uh, there's only a couple of things I want to talk about, um, but before I do that, if you guys have any questions, I will have, we have a little bit of time to, to go into one or two. So while I um, talk about um, our community and think, feel free to drop questions in the chat and one of the moderators will pick it up and we can address the questions towards the uh, end here. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the tremendous growth that our community is experiencing. We are really, really, really close to our mark, hitting a mark of 300,000 members. Um, give you an idea, we only started this about four years ago at zero, and now we are uh, at almost 300,000. I think our official number is 295,000 or something like that, so we're gonna hit this probably within the next two weeks or so. So look out for that, and obviously, thank you so much to all of you for joining the community, because without you, we wouldn't be able to grow the community. Without growing the community, we wouldn't be able to bring you content like this. So uh, um, big thanks to you guys. Um, second, I want to talk about Think. Um, so I hope you had a chance to go to Think and um, check it out. Sorry why I'm fiddling here with my little computer, because I'm running out of power, which is amazing. Um, so um, at Think, um, I, I think it was one of the uh, better things that we had so far. While in, in person was smaller, um, I think that the content um, it was provided was really insightful and it kind of really shows uh, where IBM is heading and, and what IBM is all about. So I want to kind of highlight a couple of things that I thought were super interesting. And I encourage you to go back to the community homepage and kind of scroll through the various topics and discussions that happened at Think and, and maybe revisit some of them, or if you haven't gone and seen it, you know, see it for the first time. So the first one was around innovation that I thought was pretty amazing. Um, they talked about uh, building out um, by 2025, um, the first 4,000 qubit processor, multi-cluster uh, uh, modular scaled processors. It's hard even like for me to, to, to spell it out. Uh, but just to give you an idea how fast this field is, is growing, um, last year um, we were super excited to announce the 127 process, uh, qubit processor uh, quantum machine. So we're going from 127 to 4,000 here uh, in a matter of a couple of years. That's like a 30, 40 times, times growth. Um, the capabilities and the computing power um, the world is going to be able to harness from those quantum computers is amazing. Uh, and uh, we will discover all kinds of things, and I think it's going to change the way we, we look at the world. And, and IBM is leading this field by far. 
Um, and uh, it's, it's just uh, very inspiring to be part of a company that's doing things of that magnitude because not many technologies that I know of, I think I can say change the world, but this is definitely one of them. Um, speaking of that, I think the other field that IBM uh, is doubling down on is um, AI. They had a survey and looked, you know, what is the current AI adoption out there? And it turns out that about 35% of the CEOs that were serviced, uh, surveyed mentioned that they already have some sort of uh, AI installed or implemented within their companies. Um, again, you know, I, I'm used to my little Alexa in the house and hopefully she's not going to come on because I mentioned the name. Uh, <laughs> and that she automates my house and, and, and uh, provides all kinds of services. I just uh, can't imagine what we will achieve with AI in the companies, uh, in the enterprise world, and uh, IBM, uh, the stuff that IBM is doing there, again, uh, amazing. But IBM is also not losing focus on, on doing things that you know, make it a better place for us to live in. So sustainability is going to be a focus going forward for IBM. I believe that IBM always have had a focus on sustainability and uh, green and responsibility uh, to the world. So it's really great to see that we are continued an investment in that area and we're going to make um, sure that, you know, our kids still have a place to be. So sustainability is uh, a, a key topic was really excited to see that this was a part of the uh, um, agenda. The last idea I want to mention is something that uh, came actually, um, or we were uh, told that it's important to you through the survey we just did. And thank you so much for participating in the survey, by the way, over 2,500 of you uh, participated in our yearly survey. And the number one thing that we heard in the survey that you guys want us to do better at um, is skills. Um, that happens to be also something that IBM is going to continue to invest in. Um, so watch out for that. Um, we heard you. We're going to bring more trainings program to you. Uh, one thing to look for is the IBM Cloud Certification uh, training is actually free now. Um, so I think that's super exciting. Check this out in the community if you're in that field. But we will look for other programs like that that we can bring at no cost to you if you are a community member. Uh, and make our community uh, better. Something else that we are going to look at for the next quarter um, is how do we, you know, uh, um, enable you to find jobs related uh, in the IBM field. So we're going to build uh, some job boards, uh, some pilots to see how it works out. But the idea here is that you know, we want you to invest in IBM and build the skills on IBM tools. So a natural thing here is if you have the skills, how do you take that into the marketplace and how do you find a job? So we want to help you actually in that process and really make you understand, you know, what is the path to the career that you're looking for and how can we support this, you to have the skills for that career? And then how can we support you to actually be successful on that career path? So that's going to be something we are going to be um, focused on. All right. Um, that was my little talk, David. Um, I know I rushed this through it, but uh, if anybody had any no, no, comments, marvelous. I'm happy to answer. Yeah, and Marius can answer questions in the background. We have the whole um, community team, many of the members of the community team on board as well to answer questions. One of the things that uh, we're doing in this session is we're looking at a creative you know, our, our community, uh, there's very fine line between creativity and innovation, uh, right, Marius? And so uh, we asked our community to post, and I shared a few in the opening, but there's uh, some real cool things here. The link is in the chat. So share with us what you do. Here, uh, John Chavez is restoring motorcycles. That That's very cool. So I, I can quick comment on that. I have a Triumph Bonneville, which is very much in the same era as these i trying to see which what these are because these are not triumphs but yeah. it looks Imagine just like going that in, going and join that conversation then yes <laughs> I think I will. oh they're ducatis oh, they're very very cool. yeah. look at this phaedra is a painter people are sharing their work and it's absolutely marvelous we if we have time today we may actually hear jim uh we just uh we have a special treat as i say if we stay on time and uh, here we've got Krista here behind the glass here, and she's sharing some of the creativity that she does at, at her church as a, a sound person. Doug on our team is uh, is a writer. And so look at this. Here's a, a mystery that Doug has written. So, I mean, food, uh, there's no limit to what is creative. 
and and what creative means stephanie has built a video game or a computer game and uh you can read about it here and you can even try it so i'm this stuff is so much fun to see we'd love to see more uh roberto wonderful uh photographs again here's a sunrise at the beach fort lauderdale and let's see here's uh the workshop of of uh steve sally mir is a opera singer cannot wait to check that link out so just keep adding your stuff in here and we'll come back if we have time again at the end steampunk in the house right here brett king look at this so much fun really fun so keep it coming keep sharing with us what we're doing and what you're doing and we look for connections too because uh chris is a dj and somebody else said i may i write music and they're off and running having a great conversation about that so hey, i want to quickly address one of the comments that came into the chat david yeah. uh one of the comments was around the formal mentoring program so i think that's a, a great idea um we have tried and deviled in mentoring programs. Um, so now that you actually put it in again, I think it's going to be something we want to look at it again. Um, but yes, connecting subject matter experts from IBM uh, with our community should remain uh, a priority. And I want you to think about, uh, I know formal mentoring program makes it very official, but we do mentoring on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So when uh, when you're posting a question in a forum and an IBMer comes and answers it, that is a form of mentoring. And feel free to connect to that individual. Um, feel free to then ask uh, other questions, maybe even in a private setting that a community platform uh, allows you to have that conversation, that one-on-one -on -one, uh, back and forth. Um, that is available to you today. We also have AMA sessions, right? Now, I know AMA sessions um, are, again, are, are short-lived, but, but it is a form of mentoring that we are trying to provide. It is where we take our uh, time, like an hour, to really focus on a particular topic um, and allow you to ask any question you may have and really go into in-depth conversation on that topic. So I consider this also a form of mentoring. Um, so please join what we currently have, and we're definitely going to think more about how to make it a formal mentor program. Excellent. That's it, David. Good question, good answer. Well, why did we want to get into everybody's creativity? There's an actual reason here for it. Um, IBM's new campaign that you may have seen called Let's Create uh, is was, was launched this year, and we've invited one of the heavy hitters behind it to give us some background about it. Uh, and then we'll get back to some of the creativity in our community. So it is my pleasure to invite uh, Gemma Smith to the stage here. Uh, Gemma, where are you coming from? Um, right now I'm in Madrid, but typically I'm in Austin, Texas. Well, happy to have you here. And you can take over the screen because I know you've got a couple of things to share. Thank you. AMA is Ask Me Anything, by the way. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. You go to presentation mode, I think it'd be perfect. There you go. Great. So I'm sure many of you have seen this work in market now that it's been um, launched since February, but we wanted to just take time to walk you through the different chapters of what is rolling out and how we got to Let's Create in the first place. And so this is a high level overview of our journey to get to the new brand platform for IBM. So in September of last year, we set out to redefine our brand purpose for today's world. And that new purpose is to be the catalyst that makes the world work better by connecting people, ideas, technologies, and organizations to drive new ways of working. So Based on that brand purpose, we then wanted to rethink what should our brand platform become to bring that purpose to life in an external facing message. And so that became Let's Create, which is intended to be an invitation to IBMers, clients, partners all around the world to bring both the technology and the people and the ideas together to actually drive the change the world needs. So once we defined Let's Create as a platform, we then needed to bring it to life. And so that phase of the work was what we were calling our brand to demand strategy. 
So at the brand level, how do we define and educate the market on who we are and what we do as a brand? But then how does that actually translate into sales and driving demand for the business? Um, so this was intended to be a fully integrated holistic effort across marketing, comms, and even sales um, to make the brand platform truly embedded across the company, not just a one-off marketing initiative. And so then in 2022, we launched the campaign. And what I'll walk you through today are the three chapters we're rolling out with in the initial launch. And this will continue iterating and being built on throughout the rest of this year into 2023. So the chapters, the way we're defining them internally are chapter one is about capabilities. So this is how do we educate what IBM does and this is through the lens of our five priority levers, modernizing, automating, securing, um, data-driven, and transforming. And this was launched across a variety of paid tactics from TV and digital video, out of home, podcast display, and social. And then many own channels like organic, social, web, um, email nurture, things like that. Our second chapter is all about clients. So it's actually demonstrating how we bring those five capabilities to life to solve real problems for our clients and partners. And then the third is about celebrating the actual visionaries across IBM, our clients and our partners who are creatively applying technology to business to drive change and heroing them as the new creators doing interesting things that are critical to driving progress and being a catalyst. So chapter one capabilities, here is a brief um, overview of some of the work that was in market. So when we launched, we were really leaning into what we were calling let's create statements. So what are all the things that we can help create and do together and bring to life to drive change? Um, so we could create new ways to, for business to do business. We can create cloud management that requires less management. And all of these hit on the five priority levers I mentioned before. And you'll see this came to life across email, web, social, video, and banners. And I thought it would be helpful to let the work speak for itself and play you one of the videos as an example. So this is one of our Kinetic 15s. I'm talking about security capabilities. So in the second chapter we launched was what we're referring to as clients. This launched in um, mid-March, early April, aligning to the masters. And we, again, focus on each of the five priority levers, but in context of an actual real use case or an application of technology. And so this was work we were calling internally, what if it was designed to be a provocation to the things we could create together and achieve um, if we partner together to get it done. And so the examples I'm showing here are just our print ads that you might have seen in Barron's, New York Times, or the Wall Street Journal. Um, and then I'll also show you one of these videos as well. What if you were a global bank who wanted to supercharge your audit system? So you tap IBM to unsilo your data and start crunching a year's worth of transactions against thousands of compliance controls with the help of AI. Now you're making smarter decisions faster, operating costs are lower, and everyone from your auditors to your bankers feels like a million bucks. Let's create smarter ways of putting your data to work. IBM, let's create. And then the last chapter, Creators, and this all recently launched during Think. Um, in Boston, and we will be rolling it out locally in everything on tour throughout the world. I believe there's upwards of 18 different cities. And 
we are identifying what we're calling local new creators. They're the visionaries applying technology creatively to drive change and highlighting the unique, impressive, amazing work they're doing to drive change through out of home and print media. And so these are just a few examples of our new creators from Boston, London, which you'll see at the event coming up shortly, and also Berlin. Um, and we will continue iterating on and building on this from different markets throughout the remainder of the year. And we also have one video I thought would be nice to show. It's two minutes, it's a little longer, um, but this is the introduction of new creators during Arvin's keynote in Boston. And it really sets the stage for some of the work these people are doing and what we mean by new creators as a concept. It's the curiosity, it's the learning, it's experiencing things that you haven't done before. And then it's the risk as well. It's feeling that you're free. You're the bird. I define creativity as taking a very large problem, something like food waste, and then collecting data towards addressing it. And so the core IP behind our technology is basically hacking a piece of fruit and making it have a digital output instead of ripening. Every single day, we're faced with something we never thought we would solve. So we need technology and outsiders to look at the whole system and kind of change how the whole system works to get to the next level. For us, we really wanted to say, you know, how can we use technology to make the process of buying a home more equitable for everyone? For me, the aha moment was that if you can automate this, if you can have virtual intelligence that can answer these questions for a person, this is it. If we could make plants with gene editing that really use less water, and it is possible, we just have to go for it. <laughs> this is uh, part of where we are doing a lot of our computational modeling with uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to try to understand where where to make these edits and what you need to edit so that you can have a better outcome. In Africa, only 11% of students have access to household computers. What do they have access to mostly? Smartphones. And so with smartphones, we can enable young Africans to get these coding skills. This is true democratization of education. I think the most creative part of my job is to sit there and put myself in the shoes of someone who I want to hack. I'm probably a weird date and I'm sitting out and just looking at things. I'm, I'm like, how would I break in or out of this? The creative process has changed because technology is one aspect of it, but applying that technology to be able to solve real world problems, that really brings the impact. And that's it, that's all we have um, launched right now under Let's Create, but I'm happy to answer any questions and hopefully if you attend any Think On Tour events coming up, you'll see some of this work around the world. I love it, thank you, Gemma. And you ended on an inspiring note, you ended with people. In fact, uh, Dr. Rania Khalif there, uh, she used to run research for IBM uh, Automation and uh, I got to know her quite well. Wonderful to see her there. and see her continuing the the mission well we're going to take that that third phase that Gemma just presented we're going to look at some of the creators that are in our community uh both on the creative side as well as on the innovation side and and are just as inspirational as as what we just saw in that last video so we're going to meet a IBMer she is on the product management uh, team uh within the business automation space uh she's She's written in the community. She's definitely a, a part of uh, of our community, and we're we're happy to have her with us today. But she's also a foodie, a creative writer, uh, a designer, a photographer, and all of this has gone into the work of uh, of her passion. She has created a literary food magazine. I call it literary because let's take a look. If you just flip through it, and Stephanie, I, I'm sorry, uh, Sydney, say hello. Let's see if we got your sound here. Hello. 
Hey there. You listed so many things, but I do. But, but if you look at this, sounding. if you look at this here, did you change? Right, here's a layout, here's uh, recipes. So you can, you can end up making something. But look at the layout here and look at the beautiful photography that you've done. And I like the use of white space. So you're truly, you know, you've got layout and design in your, uh, you know, your list of uh, capabilities. And uh, there's some wry and wonderful, uh, uh, you know, confessions even. But again, I love the use of, of space and the way you lay this out. Now, as I understand it, this is bi-monthly, more or less. That you more or less. It's more or less bi-monthly, sometimes quarterly. All depends on inspiration, experience, all that. So let's go to the beginning. Why did, why did you want to start this? I, I believe in kind of bringing your full self to any situation, whether that's work, whether that's a personal interest. And when I started thinking about things that I like to do outside of work, I found myself kind of landing on I was writing a lot in my spare time. I was cooking a lot in my spare time. I did actually used to be a freelance food blogger once upon a time, and I had worked with a bunch of chefs doing various freelance gigs at their restaurants, everything from optimizing their inventory to helping them generate content for social media in my past life. And I initially started thinking, well, maybe I'll just see what it would be like to put some type of coffee table book together. Um, I was a world arts and cultures major. And so I had done a lot of work in galleries and at museums. And typically with any type of exhibition or gallery opening, there's an exhibition book from the curators and from the artists themselves. And I thought about, well, what if a coffee table book and an exhibition book and a food magazine or a literary magazine, like you said, like the Paris Review or something like that, just sort of all fused together. And then I realized that if I had to create it, I would actually have to do all of those things myself. As you mentioned, I would actually have to write. I would have to learn how to take pictures. I would have to learn how design software worked, um, all of that. And so that's essentially how Aji got started. Um, Aji is the Japanese word for flavor by the way. Favor, I like that. Yeah. I think uh, Kat may post a link to Aji. You've got a couple of uh, ep issues. I'm going to say episodes, but it's a story. Could be an episode. You have a couple of issues published. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at the February one, which I think has to do with relationships. And so you have a theme to them. So the question I want to ask uh, some of our creators today, including you, is, is that relationship between your work, your high-tech career, and, and the creativity? What's the relationship for you in this? What I actually took a design thinking approach when it came to creating Aji, not unlike the way that we approach building product um, at IBM here or the way that many um, developers who are working on applications do. It's I, I had all of these disparate parts and I had the context and I knew I wanted to make something, but I didn't necessarily know what shape I wanted that to take. So I actually did kind of an informal survey. I talked to a bunch of chefs that I had worked with. I talked to a bunch of creatives that I really respect. I talked to friends as well. And I did this whole exercise where I was just asking about pain points that they encountered when they're scrolling through things like Instagram or reading stuff today. And what do they come across? What do they like about it? But then I connected it over to my own eye, my own taste, if you will. What do they find most appealing about X writing samples that I had sent over or these types of different ways of presenting food, these different types of other photography shots? And I connected all of those into different themes. And I'm still figuring out how they're going to play out in, in Aji, but that's, that's how all of that comes together. Marvelous. I, I I just love it. I think people uh, should go and check it out and and be uh, and somehow subscribe or be a regular uh, viewer of your of your wonderful magazine. So, I want to thank you for coming and, and inspiring us, and uh, uh, definitely check out Sydney Adams's work uh, both uh, at IBM and with Aji. She is uh, somebody to watch. So thanks, David. 
<laughs> Thanks so for kind. being here. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, now, also, creativity and innovation, definitely uh, very linked together. And one of the great things about a community and being a community manager, which I am, is that we can challenge the community and you will respond. Just as you did with our creative challenge, we had a contest that we call the IBM Build-A-Bot Challenge. It uh, went over the Christmas holidays into January. We had $20,000 to give away in prize money. And we laid down a challenge to somehow make the world a better place with automation. And we saw solutions that improved education, that addressed ongoing COVID issues, uh, that improved healthcare. And my next two guests uh, were among the six winners and their solution addresses mental health. And so I wanna welcome Sarabi and Mayuri from India today. Thank you for staying up late. How are you both doing? Um, thanks, David, for inviting us. We are doing good. Excited to talk about our project with the community. Good. Well, one of the things we ask uh, all submitters to do is to create a five-minute, six-minute video to explain what the solution is and show a little bit of how it works. Well, that seems like a perfect place for us to start today so that in the audience you get a sense. It is about a five-and-a-half-minute video, uh, but you will get the whole story of what they created, and then we'll talk to... Uh, Mayuri and Sarabi about what they did. At some point in their lives, one in every four people suffer from mental illness, and COVID-19 is only added to this. To support their employees, companies around the world are looking for simple, yet effective ways to help workers maintain their well-being. Prolifix now offers an AI-powered, automated solution. It is a mental health assessment tool we've named HOPE. Companies use HOPE to collect survey data through forms or chat sessions. The program analyzes the data and uses a scientifically proven scoring system to identify and contact those who could use assistance. Early detection is the key to better outcomes. HOPE makes it easy to proactively review and positively address a worker's mental well-being for the good of everyone. HOPE will lead to a healthier workplace. Here's our team to show you how. HOPE is built using IBM RPA, which provides powerful and robust capabilities to perform different tasks. HOPE can be leveraged in two approaches. Let's understand the first approach, that is bulk processing. Let's take an example where an organization conducted a Google survey to collect the PHQ-9 responses. PHQ-9 consists of nine questions of different categories to determine the severity of depression in a person. HOPE starts by downloading the survey response file. After reading the file, a score is calculated for each survey based on PHQ-9 standard. Surveys having sto score greater than 12 or with a positive response for ninth question, that is suicidal indication, needs further attention. Then a REST API call is made to the UHID system and the required details like name and email ID are retrieved using NLP extractors. A cumulative report is generated using report feature in IBM RPA and sent via email. The second approach is interacting with Hope via chatbot. Let's see the chatbot in action. This is the chatbot window of IBM RPA. Hope starts with greetings and asks for UHID. Hope fetches details like name and email ID from the UHID system via an NLP extractor. First, it asks, how am I feeling? And I, since I have answered as no, it will ask me PHQ-9 questions. The first question is about interest. The second question, is about feelings. The third question is about sleeping schedule. The fourth question is about energy. The fifth question is about appetite. The sixth question is about fear of failure. The seventh question is about concentration. 
The eighth question is about unusual behavior. And the ninth question is about suicidal indication. Now I have answered all the questions and hope will calculate my score. Since my score is 14 and it falls under moderate depression, hope will suggest me to take doctor's consultation. Since I've selected yes, it will ask me for an appointment date. Here I have provided an appointment date. After this, it will navigate to the hospital website and fill the required details. It is filling the required details as patient ID, patient name, email address, appointment type, date, slot and doctor's name. Now since the slot is available, it will ask for confirmation. I have given the confirmation, so now the appointment is booked. Hope will confirm same over chat window. And also the details will be sent to email. This completes the execution of Hope chatbot. Now let's look at the email. This is the appointment confirmation email with details and report attached. This completes the first scenario. Now let's look at bulk processing. This is IBM RPA launcher which provides capability of attended automation. With one click I've started the bot and it has navigated to the response page. Now it will be downloading the response and after downloading the score will be calculated for each survey. And it also generates a report with Excel data and an email it sent. Hope has now completed the process. Let's look at the email. Email contains the details of people with high risk and cumulative report for better visualization. This concludes the demo of our digital assistant Hope, which leverages niche features and completes the entire process which covers chatbot, NLP, reports, HTTP integration, website integration, Google Forms and emails with just single platform which is IBM RPA and provides many automation benefits like improving the productivity, which in turn reduces the cost and time of the process. At the same time, improving the accuracy and eliminating the redundant human efforts. Thank you and keep smiling. Wonderful, wonderful. And so we talk about tech for good. Here's a great example of tech for good. Uh, so, Sarabi, so just a couple of quick questions to, to kind of follow up and get to know a little bit about your process, creative and otherwise. How did you determine that this was the challenge you wanted to focus on for this contest? Um, right, David. So the inspiration for folks come in when we all were going through a tough time during COVID-19 pandemic. So I was taking multiple trips to hospital for my mother's treatment for who she was uh, suffering for post-COVID complications. And I was talking to people over there waiting for my appointment. So I felt that people are not mentally in right place. And there is a very thin line between being sad and being depressed. So this is something I have observed, uh, you know, many times. And when this ch challenge came, I spoke to Mayuri that we want to good, build something for our community. Then we have, we, I discussed this idea with Mayuri. She also liked it. And then we started researching about facts and numbers, right? And numbers don't lie. And we have uh, collected data from uh, different websites, WHO surveys, and we have seen that there is a 30% increase in depression only due to uh, pandemic. And this number is increasing in every survey. So this is a more pressing issue in the society right now. And the only solution is to proactively review a person's mental health and provide solution before you know that something things happen occurs then we started researching on how how can we help our community digitally how can we solve uh, this problem then we uh, get, get to know about the phq9 technique which is a scientifically proven formula which is explained in the video with the help of that we designed our hope bot and which is built in ibm rpa so we put our pieces together with the numbers and uh, the techniques and we designed our bot using many niche features and submitted our entry for the challenge. Well, you sure did. We're talking about innovation and creativity. So I'm interested, in, and maybe Mayori has a thought on this, is 
how you work together on this. I understand there's research, uh, there's development, there's testing, there's all kinds of uh, elements to it. And, and PHQ, by the way, stands for uh, Psychological Health Questionnaire. It's an industry standard. So you are building on a foundation, as you said, a proven foundation. Uh, but how do you work together? Was it agile development? Was it the design thinking that we heard, you know, from Sydney? Uh, so David, we st first started with the social issues which are there, uh, which currently people were facing. So depression was one of the pressing issues. Many people due to COVID and the pandemic, they were facing depression. Knowingly or unknowingly, they were suffering from some um, mental, like they were not happy. We can say that like that. Mm -hmm. So. First, Surbi and me, research, uh, we researched for a topic and after we got the topic, then we researched more on depression. Like, uh, how, what are the numbers, then how we can, how people are helping them, what are the technologies built for it. And after that, we started our uh, development. So, PHQ-9 is something which uh, uh, helped a lot in our project. We got a formula which we can, uh, which we were able to uh, integrate with our technology so as to work forward. And it was an agile, uh, the development was agile. Like uh, we uh, did the project in steps, bits and pieces, and then combined everything together. So, yeah. <laughs> And we use really. the community help uh, anywhere. So the platform allows us to collaborate, allows us to work independently. So that helped a lot, David. It's marvelous. Uh, we've got to keep running uh, because we've got a couple more things. I want to again thank Sarabi and Mayuri from Prolifix and uh, and thank Prolifix as well for making you guys available to us. Uh, they have a client center and this featured. And I know that uh, they are sharing it with organizations who may want to adopt this kind of solution. Uh, you know, most of the, the the proof of concept exists, and you could take this and actually uh, deploy it without a whole lot of work. Am I right in that? Yes, David. Yeah. So, if there's anyone who's interested in contacting them or reach out to uh, Prolifix, and we thank you again uh, for being part of this today, and thanks for staying up late again. All right, Thanks. we'll see you again on the next one. And we have another creative cameo with us today. We have uh, an ECM partner, and their name is ECM Partners. ECM being uh, Enterprise Content Management, um, part of the business automation uh, portfolio. Raul is co-founder of this business partner based in the Netherlands, uh, but he's also a Sony Music recording artist, multi-instrumentalist, and I'm gonna play a little bit of uh, music uh, that he has provided, and then we'll talk to Raul. So get ready to tap your feet here. Nodig hebben is jouw vertrouwen, liefde, geluk, iets om op te bouwen. Je bent mijn bier, ik je als de bouwers. Heb genoeg aan jou, pak die andere vrouwen. Al die neppen zit op social, mag je bij je houden. Laat me van je houden. Heen en weer, maar telkens weer. Shit is frustrated, maar fucking zeer. Ik vraag mezelf af, kijk je op me neer. Probeer mezelf te bewijzen, keer op keer. Ben geen met je zin, heb het zelf mijn hoed. Maar vertel me aan UB hoe het beter moet. Zeg maar wat je doet. Raul, that is wonderful. I know you do Bollywood soundtracks. Uh, you do an awful lot. You tour uh, when uh, some of the bands come to Europe that might need to pick up some extra uh, uh, talent. Uh, there you are. And you, you're you playing every all the instruments on that. So Yeah, <laughs> I am. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking a lot uh, today about the, the relationship between creativity and, and high tech. And 
in fact, in automation, we use musical terms to describe things. We use the term orchestration to talk about how you, you know, work, make a workflow work. Do you see similarities between your music career and your high tech career? Well, the, the, the biggest thing that I see, David, uh, today's music is all about technology, basically. And just to give you some examples, uh, we have access to many sound libraries where uh, uh, actual instruments are sampled in a high frequency, not only the instrument, but, but also the be specific behaviors of an instrument, such as string bending, right? So you can make it sound like somebody's actually playing it while it just comes out of a keyboard. The second thing is that um, we use a lot of high-end hardware and software to make the music sound bigger and larger. Uh, we do a lot of processing so that you can uh, listen to it on different uh, devices, such as iPhones, laptops, but also on professional audio equipment. It's too simple. So, yeah, today's music is all about technology. Very interesting. Do you have a, a story, an anecdote of, of how your music career has taken you to some interesting place, uh, interesting story you might want to share with us? Uh, at, at this moment, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work uh, coming uh, through from Sony India. So um, I think there are a lot of big productions that I'm going to work on. And uh, yeah, I'm looking out for that. That's good. <laughs> But you're still running a you're still running a, a business as a business as an IBM business partner. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Is there is there does one feed the other or do you find that they're different? They're, it's a different kind of a, of so, a skill level. There's, these are actually two different things. Okay, in the end, it's all about creativity, right? So if you're right. doing uh, automated systems, of course, one needs to have a creative mind for that. But there are actually two different things, and. Um, in the beginning, I had a lot of problems to manage both things together, but actually I've learned to say no. And that's very difficult, especially when you're very um, passionate about something, right? So um, I kind of watch out what I'm doing, what projects I'm taking, who I'm working with, uh, simply because I have a business to manage. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. But uh, it is really pretty cool. Well, uh, sure. there's more, there's more that you can find for Raul. You just, <laughs> you just keep coming. You just don't stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, uh, I'm challenged with the buttons. Um, this is wonderful. And thank you for sharing, uh, some of your talents with us, Raul, and we'll uh, make sure that people in the audience can enjoy your music. Are you going to? play live anywhere soon that you can promote and, and let people know where we might be able to see you? No, I've stopped the uh, live performances, but um, I will let you know when I'm uh, Okay, good. This again. This is marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Um, Chris, the summit uh, has a, a sh some announcements, I think, about some of the badge winners. And, uh, and Krista is right around the corner here. If you come off mute. I, I am. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have a talented community and and creators? Can we just clap it up in the chat for everybody, for our host, David, and for everybody that's put this together? Drop an emoji. Let us know how you're feeling in the chat. This is a, a super, super uh, event. I'm just super excited about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, show, show everybody their, your love there. Uh, all right, so this part is about celebrating you, our members, and your contributions to the community. Um, my name is Krista Summit, and I'm the um, uh, lead for our gamification program, which is the system where we honor uh, and recognize all of the contributions that you guys make uh, to the community and, and recognize that internally and, and also externally so if you can go to the next slide dave David. i don't i don't have your slides if you want a slide oh uh, i'm sorry okay oh yeah i thought you had mine man okay here we go so all right so as i said yeah this is you know gamification is the program by which we celebrate you guys and honor what you've your contributions to the community uh internally and externally um first of all let's talk about uh and show overall what you guys have contributed. So first of all, um, 
In terms of one of the things we measure is how many community members have earned at least one stamp or one badge to date. So just in first quarter, we had 3,400 of you earn at least one gamification stamp, whether you went in and answered questions, questions you followed a bunch of people, uh, maybe you contributed a blog or a discussion thread or a resource in the resource library, whatever it is. Um, so 3,400 of you stepped up in instant first quarter, and that's fantastic. And I clap you up myself for that. Um, overall, uh, since we relaunched the program last September, um, 47,000 community members have earned at least one stamp. And I look at that as this 47,000 people that have stepped up and contributed to their peers and made this a better uh, community and enrich the community. So again, clap it up in the chat for yourselves for that. That was fabulous. And, and we really do appreciate you uh, for all you do. If you go into your profile, by the way, you can see um, all of the stamps you have earned to date. Okay. So if you can, do, if you can wrap it in one minute, we've got time for Stephanie. Okay, sure, sure. So um, these are the new citizen badge earners. I will post this in our blog. Um, and you can see what they've done to earn this there. And that's a badge that I can share on LinkedIn. And let me move quickly to um, ARC, the contributor badge earners. Uh, these three people um, in first quarter distinguished themselves by they've been in the community for at least six months. They've started at least 12 discussion threads, contributed three pieces of content and given at least 25 types of engagement, likes or thoughtful comments in their community. So we want to salute Rachel Sue in the Cognos community, Naomi Scott in the MQ community, and Jason Verley in the WebSphere community. So can you clap it up for them? I don't know if, if you're here, please put your hand up so we can recognize you otherwise. Um, just give them a shout out when you talk to them again in the community. Um, thank you for all you do. If you want to learn more about the community, about the badge program, all of that is in the community. And with that, back to you, David. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cameo. And that is Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. What Stephanie does, in addition to being a data cab expert for pyramid solutions and traveling the world to install software, she is an amazing ceramicist. And I've got a few samples of her work here. And you can see uh, a Japanese influence, for example. Uh, here's some lovely, lovely bowls for eating rice. Uh, they're, they're both utilitarian, but also I think quite beautiful. And uh, there's a link there. Look at this, a knitting bowl so that you put in your yarn and, it, and it's, I've got to get one of these from my mom. Stephanie, are you there? This is uh, some stunning work. I hope we didn't lose her. You know, once in a while, these things happen. She uh, has definitely got her hands dirty. And <laughs> I know when I was in high school, I had a job for a while. I was, my job was to knead the clay to get ready for the real ceramicist. And then I, they taught me how to throw some stuff on the wheel. Because her work is beautiful. And you can see here, she might spend some time reeling off a bunch of them, and here they are drying in her in her uh, workshop. And then I'm here, David. Can you hear me? I can, and I'm glad you're here. Okay. You know, yeah, I'm um, glad too because you are you are getting into the dregs of the pottery display. <laughs> well, no, this is amazing stuff. So, how long have you been doing? Thank it? you. A long time. I took my first class right after college. I won't tell you exactly how many years. <laughs> yeah, that much. And it yeah. has become, it is, I consider it a hobby. I think my husband and others might consider it um, a sick obsession, but um, I do enjoy it. And I do like getting muddy as you just described. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that part too. So um, <laughs> where, it, it, where can we get some of this? Cause I definitely want to want to obtain some of these for. Oh, oh boy. Talk about technology. Talk about um, bonding technology and creativity. I do sell on Etsy and I do have a website and I do sell on Facebook and none of those are active at the time because I seem to be enjoying the pottery process more than the technology focus. 
But if you Google Kiefer Clayworks, you'll find me out there. And it's my goal to get back out into social media land. All right, we'll get back out there. Kiefer Clayworks, that's K-I-E-F-E-R, Clayworks, all one word, I think. This is marvelous. Do you find that this um, getting, uh, working in the earth is is like yin yang? Is it very different from the technology job? Is it like, or is there any relationship? You know, I never thought there was a relationship until I got asked to, to talk about pottery on this IBM call. I think that was the first intersection of, of work and play. Um, and I had never thought about it before. To me, they were usually just completely different things. You know, I, I do work during the day and then whenever I'm not working, I'm down in the studio. But you made me think about it and I realized it really is very similar. I mean, instead of architecting, designing and selling software, I'm designing, making, planning, scheduling to sell pottery. And it's to me, it's I really enjoy the kind of people aspect of it, the social aspect of it. So I think actually they are they are more related than I ever admitted before. Marvelous. Well, let's create. That's what uh, our theme has been today. I definitely want to thank all of our speakers for their creativity, for showing up today and talking about it. I want to thank Tim Bonneman, who is our producer uh, behind the, the screen, Krista Summit, Sarah Cogley, and uh, the wonderful uh, Kat Jarvis for helping us today. And of course, uh, singer Babian Avila and my son Daniel Jeunesse for helping me create the opening number. And I want to thank all of you for joining us today for Social Hour. And we will see you again at the next one. And we might just dig into this theme a little bit more. So keep on bringing us your creativity into that thread. That would be marvelous. Thank you all. Till soon. <laughs>